Welcome back to Zachas. I'm so glad you joined me for another video. Are you taking a trip on United Airlines? You want to know these five things, I promise you, or maybe you don't want to know them. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm gonna give you five quick tips on how to fly United Airlines and get there and enjoy it and be in control of your trip so you don't get sabotaged and you can control anything that comes up against you on this treacherous territory we call flying on airlines these days. Are you ready? So the first one is gonna be all about checking the luggage and seats and stuff like that. The second one's gonna be about security and boarding. Then we're gonna do snacks and water. You wanna pay attention to that one. Then we're gonna do entertainment, headphones and stuff. And then we're gonna do charging. And then I got a bonus for you. Here we go, let's dig in. Number one, tip number one, check in luggage, seats, all that stuff. Quick tip here is don't buy your tickets from anybody but United. You're gonna look on Hopper, you know, uh, Travelocity, Priceline, Google, all that stuff. It's just great. I use those tools too. But when you're ready, go to United, book directly with them because you're going to get a better price usually. And if anything happens, you can go directly to United and they can have the power to solve your problem. If you book through anybody else, you got to go to Expedia, Travelocity. You got to deal with them directly, any of the third parties out there. And it's a nightmare. And trust me, I'm talking from personal experience. I've been flying for many, many, many years internationally, around the world, around the country, every airline imaginably almost. And I'm here to tell you right now, I'm telling you these tips because of what I've experienced myself the hard way. So once you've got your ticket, you check in 24 hours before your flight. So if your flight is on Thursday at 6 p.m., on Wednesday at 6 p.m., you'll check in. You do this for two reasons. You don't have to do it, but I recommend it because you're gonna get checked in and let the airline know you're coming. If you're late or something, they're not gonna give your seat away. And two, you get to uh, pick your seat or, or make sure, confirm that your seat that you selected is still good. And usually, they will offer you some kind of upgrade. Um, an upgrade to a better seat, sometimes great deals for first class. It's just good to know your options, you know? And if you decide to take a check-in or something like that, you can always deal with that then. Then you get your boarding pass and you're ready to go. That's step one. You wanna get there a little early and you get to take a carry-on and a personal item. Now, depending on what kind of seat you picked, determines if you actually get to take the carry-on with you you in your overhead space or you have to check it at the gate. You know, it's, a, it's kind of hit or miss there. So they have three seat types. They have the economy, which is your standard free seat you get to select when you buy any ticket. Then they have economy plus, which gives you extra leg room. It's up front and usually you get a little bit of charging, which we'll talk about later. And then the third one is first class, of course. So, um, with economy plus, you don't just get extra legroom, you get on first, but you also get a space above you for your carry-on, so you don't have to check it. It helps you when you get off. It just protects all your stuff, you have it with you, all that kind of stuff. It's usually worth it. Now, United is one of my favorite airlines. I flew them every week for almost a year, um, twice a week, to Houston and back to Dallas. Um, I flew them a lot. and. I'm going to give you a cool bonus one on this one that's going to help you a lot on upgrades and stuff. So hang with me, hang with me. But basically, you get checked in, you get your luggage, you select your seat, and you're good to go. So let's go to tip number two, security and boarding. So security is, is pretty standard. Every airline, you have to go through security. But if you're first, you're going to get, and most airports, they have a priority boarding lane, which is going to let you skip that long line and get you to the front of the line and get you through security. You still have to do everything. If you're not pre-checked though, this is a huge benefit, especially if you're in a rush or in a hurry or you're late or something like that. It's saved me so many times, but it's not a must, you know, if you're on a budget, there's nothing wrong with economy or economy plus. I've flown, flown them many, many times, um, many, many times. In fact, most of that year I flew economy 
or economy plus <clears throat> so really nice planes really nice uh Flight attendants, crew, um, employees, just really great airline. I knew a friend that worked for them that I got to work with later. Um, just really, I really enjoyed them. I like them a lot better than American Airlines, I'll tell you that. I had the opportunity to live in Dallas to fly American because they're hubbed out of there. And thankfully, United is hubbed out of Houston, so I just had a second option. But I, I flew American one time to Houston and had all kinds of problems. Not that I didn't have problems with United. I got stuck on the tarmac for four hours one time. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. But they're a good airline. They're a good airline. So they do their boarding just like most everyone does. You're gonna get a group letter or number on your boarding pass, whether it's printed or on your app and you're gonna find that group, maybe it's group C or group three or something like that, and that's how they board. They're gonna board all the special needs and kids and handicap and military veterans and stuff like that, military on first, then they're gonna board first class, then they're gonna start on the groups. And you're gonna look at your boarding pass and if you're in group C, they're probably gonna call group A and then group B and then you'll be in group C. This determines what stage you get on the plane, but everyone's gonna get on the plane, so, it's not a huge deal a little tip here if you get to the airport and you're really stressed and you want to maybe upgrade to first class you missed it or just weren't sure you can always go to the desk and ask them it's very rare that they'll have anything for you sometimes it's like five hundred dollars but sometimes it's like yeah we'll do it for free or we'll do it for a hundred dollars or something so it's always worth asking you you don't get anything unless you ask so it's always good and be nice and be polite and if they don't have anything still be nice and be polite I'm telling you, it goes a long way. Tip number three is what I was about to get into. Once you get through security, you can, you know, take snacks, but no water. So you gotta hit a store, you gotta get snacks and a water, and I usually take a Coke with me too. Try to get a big water, you know, something pretty hefty that you can, um, you know, cause you never know what's gonna happen. Now, a lot of you are like, oh, it's too expensive, I, I'm late, I gotta run to the plane. I'm telling you, I've been running before and I've gone by a vending machine and hit that vending machine with my Apple Pay or something and got the water out because I'm telling you, I've learned this the hard way and I'm begging you. This is one of the most important tips of this video. Take a water and take a snack if you can because you do not know once you get on that plane what's gonna happen. What I just said, I there was a tornado in Dallas and I got on the plane and they made us sit there for an hour trying to get clearance to just push off. And then they took us off without letting us take any of our stuff. And I sat in a tunnel for two hours. Then they put me back on the plane, drove out to take off and got another uh, alert. And we sat out there for three or four hours. Nothing, I didn't have any food or water with me. This is where I learned the hard way. I never get on a plane without it now. I, they couldn't service drinks, they couldn't service food. All that time we got nothing. All the stores closed because it was late. Uh, I was flying on a late flight, so I couldn't run to the store after we got off because everybody had to go down the tunnel because of a tornado or tornado warning. So you just never know. Uh, sometimes you get up in the in the in the air, and it's the captain will come on and say there's turbulence. They can't serve you, and they can't get up, and you're stuck. You don't get the drink service. Sometimes it you had to circle an airport for a while because of a storm or because of issues. You want to be in control of whatever comes. And if you have a good size water and a Coke and some chips and peanuts with you, you can just put your phone up, and kick up and relax. You know, I promise you that leads me into tip number four, snack, uh, entertainment and headphones. Like so many people these days think, oh, I'll just take my phone with me, even Spirit and low budgets like Allegiant and uh, Frontier have uh, onboard entertainment. But I promise you, I've flown all of them many, many times and you can't rely on it. A lot of times their Wi-Fi goes down, which a lot of times their entertainment systems go down, their music goes down. Sometimes the whole thing goes down. So download Hulu, download Amazon Prime, download HBO Max, whatever you use, go and download your favorite TVs, your favorite movies. Download the stuff you, you wanna have with you just in case. If you listen to music, go get a, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever. Download your playlist, download your albums, uh, podcasts, Audible, anything like that you wanna have on your phone so that if their system's down or their thing's not working right or they don't have the content you like, 
you are in control. You have your water and you have your stuff to watch and you're like, nothing gonna, nothing gonna affect me, you know? I'm here to have some fun. Cause you paid for that trip, whether it's business or pleasure and you don't need the stress. And, and, and it's the worst feeling in the world to be trapped in that tube with being super thirsty because you ran through the airport because it was hot or just because you're thirsty or you're hungry and then having no control. So I promise you, download your content and get your headphones. You take your AirPod Pros, your AirPods, your, your Quiet Comforts. I highly recommend Bose Quiet Comforts because it just cancels out all that noise, the screaming babies, the jet, all the talking, all the stuff. You can just like really zone in and enjoy yourself. It's worth every penny. But whatever you do, don't ever, 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 ever listen or play or watch something without headphones. It is the rudest, ill-mannered, immature, stupidest thing to do. I don't know when this changed because I've flown for many, many years and this never was an issue. People know how to get on a plane, how to get off a plane, how to be mannered on a plane. But lately it has gotten crazy. They now had to make regular announcements, to, uh, the uh, flight attendants to say, hey, you need headphones. You can't listen to stuff out loud. I don't know how many times I've been near someone that's playing a game or watching a movie just out loud. like, like. There's nobody else there. Come on, now you gotta be considerate. You gotta be mature enough to realize you're not the only one on that plane. You're all in it together. And you've got to do things that are respectable, mature, and mannered to you know, be on this flight together. And it's just crazy that I even have to say this, but a friend the other day flew a long haul flight and their parents went to sleep and left their little kid just watching movies so loud that you could hear every word they were in the front of the plane and he was in the back. And finally a flight attendant you know, stopped it, but it's just ridiculous Like that, that people think that that's okay, that, that their needs outweigh other people's. Like we have, to, we have to realize that our needs end where other people's begin. We have to be in this together and be considerate and caring for people. And if you forgot them, just ping, ping, ping. And the flight attendant will bring you headphones. It's not a big deal. Sometimes they charge a couple of dollars, but usually they'll give them to you for free. And um, if there's if there's entertainment centers, so sometimes they'll just pass them out. But just do the right thing there, you know. And I've got all kinds of gear and travel gear in Amazon that you can check out for when you're flying to make your flight even easier. Um, and stuff like that. If you like cold, cold water, I take my Yeti uh, tumbler or it's like a, you know, sealed up and I just dump that cold water in there and it'll stay cold the whole flight. Um, I've got a fly flap. So if you get tired of like holding your phone up or like, you know, looking down and hurting your neck, uh, it's just this really cheap, like 15 bucks thing that goes up on the seat that holds your phone. Super, super cool. Love it, love it, love it. Um, just a lot of tips and tricks I've found over the years flying. Um, I tell you, if you fly a lot, you start thinking, man, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to figure out that, um, stuff like that. So I'm just bringing it here to you guys. Hit that subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber, become part of the Zacchaeus nation. That's what we do here. I give you honest reviews. I'm not affiliated with anybody. Sometimes I use affiliate links, but it's just because I found them online and they, a lot of people have affiliated systems but they don't know who I am. I'm here just trying things or flying and giving you tips to make your life easier. It's all about you, you, you. I'm not here to sell anything. I'm just here to say, hey, this is what worked for me and made my life easier. And that leads me to tip number five, which is charging. Tip number five. A lot of people ask me this, can I charge my phones? Can I charge my devices? And I'm gonna say 99% of the time, it's a big no. And that's because a lot of these planes domestically are older and they didn't think about that back then. Some of them are you know, from the 80s or 90s, even early 2000s when before all that was a thing. If you get on a new plane, you might get one, but it's too risky. And so what I do is I use a way carry on they're a travel company that sells luggage. And the beautiful thing about them is they sell a charge, a battery pack built in to their carry-on. And it's a rapid charger and you can pop it out and it's portable. So while I'm walking through the airport, I can charge my phone. I can pop it out and keep it at my seat if my phone's getting low or I'm watching a lot of stuff. 
if it's a long flight or something to charge my phone. Um, we've done this internationally. We've taken it with us because you're, you need the security, the maps, the phone, take pictures, videos, and it kills your phone. So you, while you're eating or something, we charge our phones back up. It's just a really great thing. I'll put the link down below. I love them so much. I've been using away travel, um, the carry on and their big checked in luggage for years now. I love it, love it, love it. It's just so nice to have. Now, if you're in first class, you're probably going to have a charging kit port. Most first class does. But if you're in economy or economy plus, it's very unlikely. Now United is a little stepping up a little bit more here. Like if you're in economy plus, they're saying you will probably have seat power, which means they've gone in and upgraded their flights. You're going to have a little bit more of an option there. But for the most part, it's not worth the risk. Don't take, don't take the chance. And here's the big bonus you've been waiting for. This is only with United. And I found this because I flew them all the time and I happened to be staying with Marriott. Every time I went there, that's the, the company, uh, the hotel the company set us up with. And so Marriott and United are united. <laughs> that worked out well. They have, uh, uh, Bonvoy now is Bonvoy Rewards is what Marriott does and you can tie your account with your United Rewards account and it gives you all kinds of perks. It can give you free upgrades to first class. I got upgraded several times because of it. It gives you extra points at Marriott, extra miles with United. So I'm going to put a link down below. I'm not affiliated with them. I make no money off this. I'm just telling you because I didn't know for a long time and I just stumbled across a billboard and was like, oh my goodness. And I looked it up and linked it and boom, man, I was earning so many more rewards at the Marriott of Stania and Miles and the upgrades are crazy cool. Like they'd be like, yeah, we'll put you on the upgrade list. And sometimes I would get up and get on the, and the upgrade and it's just nothing like it after a long week of getting on and first class and just getting to chill out and get a nice drink. Um, I don't drink alcohol, but you know, just getting served. Like when they do the drink service in uh, every other class, it's just like a little tiny, like splash of Dr. Pepper or Coke or something. But in first class, you get the whole can, you can get three cans, you can do whatever. So stuff like that just kind of, you know, makes it nice. I've only flown first class most, most 99% of the time when I fly long haul, like over six hours, like from Atlanta to Seattle or something like that, because it's just such a long flight and they do one drink service they give you one little drink for six hours uh, and it's just crazy. So I hope this video helps you. It's going to help you if you listen to my tips because I've been there and I'm telling you this works. These will, will allow you not to let things come in and sabotage your day because it will happen. You will get delayed. You will get canceled. You will get stuck eventually and you'll have all this stuff and be like, I'm in control and I can weather the storm. You're going to have an amazing trip though. United is an awesome airline and I'm so excited for wherever you're going, whether it's business or pleasure. And I really am grateful that you watched Zacchaeus and you're part of this Zacchaeus journey and become part of the Zacchaeus nation. There's a subscribe button right here. You can hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified first when I put up videos like this. And it's free to do so. You just cancel anytime you want to cancel. I love seeing your beautiful faces, Zacchaeus Nation. Thanks for coming along the ride. We're almost to 7,000, so I'm so excited about that. And hopefully be 10,000 by the end of the year, just going up and up. And we're just going to keep pumping out content that we know will help you and make your life better. I will catch you in the next Zacchaeus video. Peace. <laughs>